Hey guys, this is Harsimran Singh. I am a founder of Flockers. You know, like today we are going to discuss like how you can reinvent your law firm. We are still waiting for some of our friends. So we'll let's give some time, few minutes. And in the meantime, you know, like let's you know like let's do like one minute silence for all the people who lost their life to the to the terrorist attack. So we'll keep one minute silence for them and after that we will start. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's start. The first thing you like today we are going to discuss is like in the automation is a lot of you, you know, like because of this COVID-19 thing, you're like you want to automate a lot of stuff. And so Locus can help you. You know, like we are going to keep this discussion like you know, like not focused on Locus, but you can do a lot of things using other tools as well. So you can use Zapier to do a lot of this stuff. But if you want to use like a single tool to do that, you can use Locus for it. And today we are going to discuss is document automation. We are going to discuss condition statements. We are going to discuss dynamic merge fields. We are also going to discuss intake forms, how you can add conditional statements on intake forms, how you can do the save progress. So your clients, you know, like they can enter a lot. If you have like a large intake forms, they can save the data and then they come back and they can again start where they left. So we are going to discuss that. We are going to discuss how we can create workflows and how we can create link intake forms with, with the rest of the data. Like you can create tasks, you can create events after intake form is submitted. And that we are going to discuss everything like in the workflow automation. In the interaction automation, we are going to discuss like how the email automation can be done and how the SMS follow-ups can be done. This thing is going to save you guys a lot of time. If you set it up correctly, you can save up to 20 hours. And we have like a study case studies from like the attorneys who have been using these kind of automation, using lockers. They are saving like 20, up to 20 hours per week. And they have, you know, like they have grown from like eight people to 20 people, like 100% growth, like in, in less than one year. So let's start with it. So I'll start with the document automation. I'm going to switch my screens now. So I'm going to stop share and then switch my screens. Okay. So once you log in, you know, like you will see the, the dashboard like in lockers and the dashboard looks like this. And in the dashboard, you have like, you know, like all the reports. So we are not worried about this. Today we are going to discuss the automation. So I will go to the automation directly. So we have like three kinds of automation. We have document templates. We'll start with document templates, intake forms, and workflows. So in the document templates, you know, like you have merge fields. So what you can do in document templates is I will show you a sample document template. So this is how a document template looks. So in document templates, you will copy paste certain merge fields and you will put in a document and then the system will replace these merge fields with the relevant data. So you see, I have like matter.relationship.medicalprovider.facts. So what it's going to do is you know, like it will, so on the, on the matter itself, this document is going to look for a relationship medical provider, and then it's going to get the facts for that. Then it will get the name, it will get the street, city. So you can add this, you can create these documents only once, and then you can recreate it like again and again. So how you will do is, you know, like I will show you, I will, Take example of it. I'm going to remove this now and I will show you like how we can create it. So we'll switch here. So once you are in lockers, you will go to automation. You will click on document templates. You will click on merge fields. So here you will see all the merge fields. So you see matter.name. If we have if we copy this matter.name, so either you can use this copy here or you can use copy from here. So if you go here and you copy this here like matter.name. So this will you know, like replace this matter.name with the relevant name, like on which matter we create this document, we attach this document, it will replace the that, that matter's name over here. So now you can build it. You can build like, let's say, if you want more information, like who is a client. So we'll say client. And then you can copy the client information as well. 
So either you can search it on the top here, filter merge fields, or you can search from here. So I will say my matter.client, I'm looking for first name and name. So I will copy this here. I will put it on, copy paste it on my document. So this is your regular, you know, like your document automation where you copy paste these fields over here and these fields got replaced by, by the relevant data. After that, you may want to put some conditions also, like if and else. For example, you know, like if the client's gender is male, you want to put his on the document. If the gender is female, you may want to put like her on a document. So I will show you how to do that. So I already have something here. So I will show you the other document. So I will go here and so what you can do is you can add if and else statements here. So it is very easy to do that. So what you need to do is you know, like you will go here. So click, so I'm using, I'm using Mac. So if you click here on the document, on the word, click on preferences, you can see the code which are here. So you will see the moment I did that, like I unchecked it, it's showing me the code behind this, this field here. So if I remove it, so it's very easy, click on a word on the top, click on preferences, click on a view, and then remove this. So if you remove this, it will show the, the value instead. And if you check it, it will show the codes which are used, like the code which we put to, to generate that, to calculate like if the gender is female, use her, if gender is a male, use his. So it's very simple code, I will show you like how it works. So if you remove it, it will go away. If I cancel it out, it will show like this. So now like how this code works, it's very simple. So how the code works is you know, like if, if there's an expression, that expression is let's say condition one. So condition can be anything. If this is true, if the expression is equals to condition, so for example, in our case, if gender is, let's say, let me take example here. If gender is female, then we put like what to do here. Like if the condition is false, do something. If it is false, do something else. So here we will write true condition. And here we will write false. So in our example, we will have when gender is a female. So if female comes as a gender, if female is equals to female, it will be her. If it is not, if the male comes in, it will be, it will be his. So, so if female comes in, if the gender like in locus is female, it will be, it will show her. If it comes as it comes as a male like in the, in the document or in the matter, it's a male for a client, it will show as his. So I'll remove this. I will show you like how you will insert this now. So how you insert this, you will click on an insert on the top. You will go here. You see this field here. You will click on this field. After this, you will select if statement. So go back. I did a mistake here. So I will click again and show all and then click here and then search for if. So now you see like it shows me here and this is what I was showing you. Like if expression one, operator can be anything. Operator is your conditions like equal to, greater than, less than. So anything like that, like the comparison, how you do the comparison would be your operator. Your operators are equal signs, greater than, less than, and there are many other operators. You can Google it, you will find a lot of that. And there are good demos also online too. So if you like Google this, you will find a lot of like online tutorials only on the conditional statements. After this, you will do if, so we'll copy the field which we have, like we'll go to locus now and we will copy this here. So we'll say gender. So you see here, so we'll copy this. We'll go back and we'll say, when gender is equals to, and we'll say female. If this is true, put her. 
if this is false, put his. So this is just an example. You can use this for anything. And you can code this for, for anything how, how you want it. So you can have conditions like, you know, like when the rate, matter rate is 300, show X thing. When rate is less than $300, show Y. So this is your one thing. Again, you see like there are times when you have, like you have to create similar documents for different kind of people. For example, you have a family case and you have to create a document for each child, like person child. So what I have, I'm doing on this document is, so I have, so what we call is dynamic merge fields. So dynamic merge fields are for the relationships. So if you have like a same relationship for different people on a matter, so I'll show you that as well. So I have like a relationship.child.name. So what I want to do is you know, like if I have five children for a client, I may be able to, I should be able to create like five documents, five different documents for each child. So this will have that. So we call it like a dynamic merge field and I will show you like how it will replace it. So I'll go back to my matter. I will go to Adolf versus Jacobs here. And if you see my matter here, I have two child. I have Blake and Angelina as a child and I have two medical providers. I have Abby Cartwright and I have Amik Singh as my, as my medical providers. So in, doc, in this document, you know, like in a sample document, what I'm trying to show you is you know, like you can create you can add like a dynamic merge fields and then you can create documents on it. Like you don't have to create four different fields or you don't have to create four different documents. So this is perm permutation combination. You can create like four into three. So almost more than four, like, you know, like more documents, but Locus will allow you to select like which child you want to create a document and for which medical provider. So the document is like this, we'll go back. So we added like matter.relationship.child.name. We have dot matter.client.name. And over here on the top, you know, like we initially we had like relationships. So I will show you like I'll switch back. And so this was our original document. So we'll upload this as a template. Sorry, you know, like I clicked it by mistake. So this was our original document here. So matter.relationship.medicalprovider.fax.name.street. So now we are going to upload this. Once we upload it, so how we upload it is, you know, like we'll click on automation, we'll click on document templates, we'll click on templates, we'll upload this document. So I already had it, so I'm not going to re-upload it. So now if you have to create document after this template, so we'll click on a matter, you will click on this sign here, attachment sign. You will click on document from template. So the moment you go there, it will ask you to select a template because I deleted everything for to, to make it easier. So dynamic merge field example, I will select it. You see the moment I selected that, that template, it tells me map relation medical provider to a client. So I will select like which child I want to create a document. So I will say I want to create for Amik Singh. So it's going to pull all the information from Amik Singh and will put it on onto the document. Now, second is you know, like I want to create like map relation child to a client. So I want to create for Angelina. So now I will say create a document from a template. So we'll click on this. It will take a few seconds. You see it created this document. I'm going to download this document and I will show you like how it will compare now. So if you see here, so medical.provider.fax, it has fax here. Date.text, the date was applied, September 11. It has Amik Singh. That was my medical provider's name. Then it has matter.client.name, like who's client. So you see, I had like Adolf Jacobs. So I was creating for Adolf Jacobs and we have like his name, his date of birth. And now you see here, like we have his, because you know, like if I, if I will show you the gender of, of adult. So we'll go to adult and we'll add it this and we'll show what is the gender. So this is female. You sh see like it shows a male there, right? So the reason being you like, so you have to refresh it. So whenever a document is created, like you will refresh it. Either you can press F5 or you can refresh, you know, like update field. 
So by updating the field, it will show the, the correct thing. So this is a limitation of Microsoft Word. Like if you have like condition fields, you have to refresh the document. You can press F5 to do all of them, or you can do select all, and then you can update it. So now you see like it shows it correctly. Now it shows as her. So now we are going to change it to his again, and I will show you like it will show his if we change the gender. So see here, like it shows Angelina Dolly. It has my email address here because in the document, what I have is, I'm doing this here. See user.email, the person who's logged in, who's creating this document and user.name. So this is very useful, these two things. If you have like a lot of attorneys in your firm, so they can create like the person who's creating it, you know, like it will show their name. And if you don't want to show that, you want to hard code it. For example, a paralegal normally creates that document. So you can hard code the name and then you can only use, like you don't have to use these fields here. And now we will use the same document. We'll cancel it out. We'll go back to Adolf and Jacobs. And I'm going to create it for, for different parameters now. So I will say document from template. I will select a template again. I will say I want to start create for Abby Cartwright and I want to create for Blake now. So I will create a document from template. So it will take a few seconds to create. We'll click here and download this now. And you will see now the system created for, for Abby here. So you don't have to create like multiple custom fields to do these like in, like in other software. So you can have like, you know, like a dynamic merge fields and then you can map the merge field with the contact you are selecting. So this is your document automation. We covered three things here. So now we'll go to, so this, you know, like we are just, so we will do more webinars after this and we will like we will do a like a detailed discussion of like every part of this so today you know like we are just giving the overview of this so after this you know, like we want to show you is intake forms so how you can create like a simple intake form so in locus you will again click on automation you will click on intake forms so here you can build your intake forms. You can use this for your contactors on your website. You can embed these on your website. You can share with your clients and you can add conditional logic on these intake forms as well. And if you send it to your clients, you know, like your clients can save the progress and then they can come back and they can start where they left. So I will create something simple. So I already have like a contactors here. So we will create something simple like that. So I will click here. I will say, add new form. So we'll say contact us. So now we can add the like, multiple choice questions. So we can have like, we can select like, any question type. So for this demo, I will say single line text. I will say first name. I will add another question here. I will say another single line text. So I will say last name. I will like add another single line text. I will say email address. And after this, I will show you like how you can have conditional logic here, okay? So we'll say preferred contact method. So we'll have like a multiple choice question and we'll say what is your preferred contact method. So this can be your text message. Add option, phone call, and email. So this is your simple contact us form, form here. So we are going to save it. And you can even embed this form on your website as well. And then you can link it with workflows and you can create leads or matters depending on it, like how you want to do it. So how you can embed this on your website. So you will click on send here. You can allow resubmission or you can skip it. And then you will click on embed. You will copy this code and you can like paste it on your website. And this will show up like this. So I will show you like how this will look. So I will say iframe W3Schools. So we are going to put that there. <clears throat> so we'll replace this iframe here. 
So if you are not technical, don't worry about it. You can work with your with your web guy and they can do it. You see the movement I did it, it embedded that form here. You can change the height of it. You can, let's say, you know, like we want width more, we want 800 and we want height as, as 900. So I'm going to make it run and you see like, this is how it, it is going to look on your website. So you can embed this and then you can link this with your, with your lockers. So whenever that form is submitted, it you will receive a notification here, like a in, new intake form is submitted. So this is simple form. And after this, like we'll create like a form which will have more conditional logic because I want to use this form on the workflow. So I'm not going to add conditional logic on this. So I will cancel it out or I will update it and, and save it, cancel it out. I will create a new form. So now new form is like, let's say you like you are doing a family case. I will say family case. And you want, again, you will do the similar thing. I will just say name here. Instead of multiple choice, I will say single line. And are you married or not? So our question would be now, are you married or not? So now depending on this answer, you know, like you may want to do like, you may want to ask different follow-up questions, right? So what we are going to do is we are going to add few pages here. So first page we are going to add is we will say married questions. We'll add one more page here. And this on this page will ask like questions which are for unmarried person. Our single questions. So now let's add some questions here, like your spouse name. I'll keep it simple. So I will say this is like a single line text. And here, you know, I will say if it's a single, let's say, question is maybe girlfriend name. Are you looking to get married? Whatever you want to do. So I will just leave it here. I will say single line text. So now we'll go back to yes and no. We'll click here. We'll say go to page based on answer. So now we'll go to page two when it is yes, like it's married. We'll go to no, like to the single page when they say no. And after the married question, you know, like we want to skip and we go to want to go to the last or we want to submit the answer. So let's add one more page here, new page. And let's drag and drop this thing to, to the bottom here. So, okay. This will go to this and let's add one page here. And say family information. So now I will even show you like how you can skip this page, extra page I have I have added. Either you can delete it or you can skip it, how you want to do it. So now you see like after the married, you're like, I want to skip and I want to go to the last page. And after a single question, you like, it will automatically go to this page. And after page in family info, I want to submit the answer. So I will say submit answer. So we created, you know, like little sophisticated form here. We are going to save it now. And we'll view it now. So this is how it looks. So I'm going to put my answer. I will say her Simran, married. So the moment I will select married and do next, it will show me married questions. If I do next, it will take me to the last page to submit. If we go back, if we do no, it will take me to single questions. If I do next, it will again show me the, the final information. Now you can make 
The other things you can add here is, you know, like you can link these answers to the custom fields or to the matter fields. So you can map them to the matter or to the contact, or you can make these fields as required. So for example, we want to make these two required. So now if we update it, we go back, we refresh it. You see like now both of them, they show required. And if you don't answer it, it will not show the next button. And now the last part is like how you can make, like if you send to your client, like how they can save the progress because that is very important because a lot of you have like, can have like a larger, larger forms. And these forms can you know, like can save you a lot of time because if you link them correctly and if you link them to 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 the fields correctly or you create workflows on them, this will save you a lot of time. Because if you currently you are sending PDFs to your clients, you don't have to. You can send them these. You can add. You can even add the fields which is which will allow them to upload the documents as well. So you can add like upload document file upload your clients can upload documents and you will see you will get all the documents here we have a client portal as well but if you want to replace client portal with something which is straight and direct you can use this to for for that as well so there your clients can upload documents from here and <clears throat> you will save a lot of time other thing you can do is you can create these forms and if the client comes in at your office you can give them the ipad and you know like if you go to like if you go to hospital these days, they give you iPad, right? And then you can add like all your information there. So you can do the similar thing. And it will save you time because you're like your client is going to enter all the information for you. So now I'm going to send this because we want to test like how save progress will work. So I'm going to cancel it out. I will say send. So now you have to link it to a client or a matter to have the save progress work. So we are going to send it to a client and we can't try it. Next, I will copy this link. You can email it here. This email will go from your own email. Your client will never find out like system is sending you, sending them. So uh, for the demo purpose, I'm going to copy this link. I will open one more browser. I will open Safari here and will enter this. So this is how it's going to look to your client. I will answer this or Simran and I will say, yes, you see the save progress. I'm going to do the save progress now. And now I will go back. I will go back to this browser to test it out. I will open this link and you will see like it will open where we left. So your client can do next. And if you have larger forms, you like, because a lot of times you like your clients, they need a lot of information to fill these forms. So they can always come back, they can save the progress and they can start where they left. So this is how your intake forms work. Now in the workflows. So now we'll sh I will show you how to link these intake forms with your workflows. So we'll go to automation piece again. We'll go to workflows. So workflows are using workflows. You can, you can automate anything in your form. It depends on like what you want to automate. You can create your own notification system. You can create tasks, you can create follow-up system like interaction management, where the system will automatically send emails or send text messages to your clients. And you can even have a delay. So we are working on a delay as well. So we'll be able to add a delay. You can add tasks here and you know, like the task will automatically create is you know, like it can have like a cascading effect as well. Like a one task can be linked to another task. So only thing you have to do is you have to add some triggers. So we will create a new workflow now. We'll say like contact us. We'll select a trigger. Your trigger can be anything. Your trigger can be like matter created, matter updated, matter moved to a stage, lead created, lead updated, lead moved to a stage client created, task created, intake form submitted, and even the user activated. So there are scenarios where you like, you can't you know, like, like premeditate, like you know, like that will happen, right? There are certain scenarios which are not very, you know, like not, they don't happen like always. So what you can do is for those scenarios, you can create like a user activated like workflow. So you will go to the matter and then you can apply that workflow manually. 
So first example I want to show you is you see like we just created that form here, contact us form. Our contact us form looks like this. So we'll go to automation, intake forms, and I will show you the contact us, this one here, contact us webinar. So what we want to do is you know, like whenever they submit this first name and last name and email, we want to create a lead. And you can skip the lead, you can directly create a matter, you know, like if you don't want to deal with the CRM thing, but if you want to create a lead, you want to create a CRM, and then you want to like, you know, track like how many leads came in, like how many potential clients came in and how many were converted. So it will show up like this, like on the dashboard, like you can track like how many leads came, how many were converted, what is your rate, how much you are spending on those, your leads look like this. So for our example, we are going to create a lead now from like whenever that form is submitted, we'll create a lead. So we'll go to automation now. We'll say new, we'll say new lead webinar. We'll select a trigger. Our select a trigger would be intake form submitted. Now we'll select an intake form. So now we have, so contact us webinar and I think I didn't update this, so I have to update this. And I will select again everything and take form submitted. Now you see like it shows me contact us webinar. We'll rename it, we'll name again lead, we'll continue. So the very first thing you want to do here is you may want to create a contact, you may want to create a matter, you may want to create a lead. So depending on your scenario, you can create any of these. You just have to map them. So for us, I'm going to create a lead today. I will say create lead. I will do next. So these are my fields which are on my lead, like first name, last name. So what we want to do is, you know, like we want to map these form fields, like first name, last name from a form to uh, my new lead form. So I'm going to do is, I'm going to click here. I will say first name from a trigger. Again, I will do the same step. I will say last name from a trigger. You can add email, you can add addresses if you want. We will not do that. Now you have to select a pipeline where you want to create it. We want to create on a lead intake. Which stage you want to create. So you can create on prospect. You can create your own stages. And then you can even map this to your like your custom fields. So for the demo purposes, we are not going to do that. We, you may want to select like who's originating attorney, you can select it if you want. So I will say continue plus new action. So now, you know, like you may want to send an automated text message to a client, right? Like we received the message from you and we'll select like we want to send to a client. You can even send it to yourself that new lead is submitted and take an action. So we'll say from, we want to select to a client. So most of times, whenever you select this, you will select custom and you will select lead value from step two. So we'll select this here. If you, so here we'll say, dear, we received your request and we'll get back to you. So you can write this here, sorry for my spellings here. And <clears throat> you can even customize this. So by customization, I mean you can add merge fields here as well. So you can click here, you will say lead value. You will say like dear first name and this. So for example, after this, you may want to send you like a follow up, like in this, in this text message, you may want to send like a follow -up form to them, like fill this form. Like after they, they send this request to you, you can do that as well. So you will select here. You will say, I want to send an intake form to them. So you will say, create document, create intake form, matter ID, lead ID, and intake form. So H1B checks list. So now we can go here and we'll say, please fill the form. And here you will say generate intake form 
from link. So this will create an intake form link and will send them like a text message for that. You can do the same thing on the email as well. You can even create a document automatically and embed that into the email. I will show you that as well. But before that, I want to show you the logic, okay? So I'm going to copy this. So here you can add a conditional logic. You see like the question we had was preferred contact method. So if client selects text, you may want to send a text message to a client. If they select a phone, you may want your like employee, your, your staff to call them. If they select email, you may want to send an email to them. So I'll show you like how you can do that, how you can code it. So here what you will do is you will click on this. You will add one more logic here and you will say like, I want to add a conditional logic, logic condition. You see, I added a logic condition now. So my logic condition would be, so I will add condition for the first branch. I will say preferred contact method. When preferred contact method is text, I want to send them a text here. When they select, so for branch B, for this branch, branch B will add a condition here and we'll say when preferred contact method is email. So we want to send an email here. And because now we want to add one more branch because you know, like we have like phone as well. So we'll say add one more branch. So system add, you can add any number of branches. The only thing you know, like you have to make it smaller or you know, like it will go, it will have like a scroll bar here. So now I will add one more. I will add a condition. I will say preferred contact method is phone. So, so now we'll do that. So we'll go here. We'll say like we want to create an email here. Send email. And here we will create a task. So we'll say task one. We'll put a name here. So we'll say call the client. And you can set a due date of this. For example, you want this task to be done the same day, or you may want to do it like one day after this was applied. So I will say one day after the creation date, done. I will assign to one of my employees or I will assign directly. So you can either customize it based on the originating attorney or responsible attorney or referred by. You can even send an email to referred by as well, like the person who referred it. Like if you want to send them like a like a thank you email. We don't have it like in, in this example, but you can do that. You can work on it. Assign user, you can do Harsimran Singh. I will assign Harsimran. I will add one more task here. I will say I want to create another task, follow up task. So I will say add task, get documents. So I will again do the same step, lead value from a lead. I will say get documents. So get documents would be like, would be based on this task, right? If they are not able to call them, they will not be able to do that, right? So if the due date of this task changes, like they are not able to reach out, this will automatically change. So we'll put a due date of this and we'll make it on based on the first task, like call the client. So this will be only, it will be three days after my first task. So good thing about this, this thing is you know, like, what I'm doing here is I'm putting a task dependency. So my task two is based on task one. So if the due date of this changes, it will automatically change. So this is very helpful. You know, like you can make it, you know, like you can have like, for example, a code date changes, it can trigger all the tasks based on it. So now I will assign a user. Again, I will say her Simran. So this thing helps you with is you know, like you can add any number of tasks. You can do anything. For example, if you are on a litigation case, I will show you like how you can do that. So you can tell your teammates what they have to do on different phases of a, of a case. So we are going to save this now on the send email. You may want to send more information on email, right? You may want to put dear, and then you can add merge fields here. You can say lead value name, and then you can add data here. And then best regards. You can select like whose email it should go, like whose teammate. For example, if you have like a common email, you can send it from your common email. You can, all these emails which will go out from the system will be like, will go from your own email. 
and you can add your, you know, like you can add, a, you know, like add your signature, and your client will never know you know, like these are coming from a from a bot. You can select the recipients here, so your recipient can be like a client, will be a client in this case. So this is how it's going to work. You see, like I have this here, like attached document from a previous template, previous step. So what you can do is you can create a template for engagement letter, and then you can attach that engagement letter on this email. So I will do for for our demo purposes. We don't have a, we didn't create the engagement letter. So I'm going to say create a document. I'm going to select the template which we created. So I will say I want to use dynamic merge field template. And now I will do is you know, like I will say attach document from the previous template. So document from step three. So what I'm doing here is you know, like you can create your document, your engagement letters on the fly. You can send it to client and attach it. You can even attach your, your invoices as well. For example, you know, like if you charge the client for, for a fee, like for, for initial consultation fee, you can create an invoice in this step. So how you do it, you will click here. You will say create invoice. You can create invoice and then you can link it here on the email as well as on the, on the SMS. So you will say invoice here. And I will go here. Please pay the invoice before our meeting. System will automatically create the invoice for you. Here you will set like how you want to do it. I think it was here. So I didn't add it like flat fees because we are running out of time. So you can add like how much you want to charge. So normally you will do a flat fees. You can add a description and a date. And again, date can be based on the, the, the date, which like on the, on the trigger date. So now you can embed this here. So you will say like this and you can add like this. So you will say generate intake form link. No, okay, invoice data from here. So you will say invoice link. And you can even put the number, invoice number here, like this. Invoice number. And we'll say invoice number. So you can customize these emails, you know, like, so if you do this once, you know, like, it will automatically trigger when whenever that in intake form is submitted. You can create more, form, like, more workflows like this, more complex workflows. I will show you a few. So I will open the ones which I already have. So I'll go to automation and here you like, I have a lot of intake forms. I have complex intake forms like this. So like a spouse, so we get like a quick book client information. We get their information. We get spouse information. It will automatically create a related contact on a method. We are asking how many children they have and based on their answer, you know, like we are showing the information based on that. Intake forms, you can like, you can create workflows like these so for example, I have this one here. You see what I'm doing here? I'm creating some task. I'm creating some SMS. I'm creating a document. I'm sending it to a client. Other ones I have is I will show you here. I think this one. So you see like I'm creating a lot of tasks. So how you will create these, these workflows too, right? So we, what we have is you know, like we have like a Kanban view. So you can select, I'm showing you a dark mode. You can select like a dark mode or a light mode. And you can create a pipeline of these tasks. So of your matters. So pipeline view is like it gives you like a like an overview of all your matters. And especially with this COVID-19 thing, you're like if you are working with a bigger team or you're working with associates, the problem is you know, like everyone is working from home. You don't have a visibility of your cases. You don't have a visibility of your of your of the task. So the pipeline view gives you that, and it also gives you to automate your workflows. So what you can do is whenever a case moves to pleading and motions, there are normally you know, like there are certain things you want to do in that. Normally you know, like your tasks are almost same. Your documents are almost same. So you can automate it. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a, you know, we are going to create a workflow whenever a case goes to pleading and motions. So I will go back to my another account and we just have four minutes left before we take questions. So I will go here, go to automation. I will say create new one. So now we are going to select new matter move to a stage. We'll select like which litigation pipeline and pleading and motions. So I will quickly show you like how this will work. 
So we'll add the task you have to do. We'll say task one. And we'll say, we'll add a due date here, three days from today. New action, we'll say we want to create another task. And now we are going to link task one with the task two. So we'll say task two days after our task one. And we'll assign to a person here, originating attorney. Here I didn't select it correctly. So I'm going to select task one, done, and new action. You may want to create an event, like whenever like it goes to the next one, next phase, add an event. So we'll say ABC and we'll select matter ID, matter value from a trigger. So this is a similar step. If you want client and you want you want to add more participants here, you can select originating attorney. We we'll select a date here. So two days done and again two days done. You can add start time or end time. I'm not going to do it. Here, the last thing you may want to send a text message, you may want to send an email, right? So I'm going to send an email to show you guys from teammate from my, I think my account here is, I think this one, Harsirohi. And I will say to client, subject, ABC test, dear, and we'll attach a document. So we didn't had it. So what we are going to say is you know, like, we want to create a document here, okay? So we'll say we want to automatically create a document and we'll select matter ID, select document template, new action. So there's no new action, we are here. So we are going to use this document on step six. So I think this should be good. You can send a text message as well. So I will say sample workflow. So we are going to save it. And let me check again. I did it on litigation and pleading and motions. So we'll go to our matter view. So pleading and motions is here, litigation is here. So I'm going to open this and see like if I have like correct information here, I will see. So it goes to this email here. I don't know whose email is this. So, and so what we are going to do is we are going to drag and drop this. And this is how it's going to look and see there are some tasks. So I'm going to mark all those tasks as complete. So now we don't have any task on the calendar. We have one meeting, but that's from the past and the document will show up here, okay? So now we'll go to matters. We'll drag and drop this to the pleading and motions. Give it a minute, not a minute, like a few seconds. We'll open it up now and let's refresh it. So you see like the system automatically generated this document for me, dynamic merge fields, 9-11. It sent an email, I will show you on my email, like in the sent folder, like it tried to send an email, but the email got bounced. On the tasks, it created those two tasks, task one and task two. And I will show you like this magic here. So if I change the due date of this one, task one, the due date of task two will automatically change. So I will click here. I will say, I want it to be October 2nd. So now I'm going to update it. You see, the moment I updated this, it updated it automatically. On the calendar, you see it created this one here, ABC, that's what we created. I'll open my email and I will show you like how the email went out. So we'll go back to info section and it shows the email here. You see at the bottom, it shows workflow bot, dear and outbound email. So you know like the email went out. So I will show you like this shows up in your email as well. So I will go here on my email, like on another screen. And so you see like the system tried to send an email to this email, Janice. And so I just put a dear 
and see this thing here. So you remember like we attached the document there because there was no information here. So it didn't add in anything there, but it created a document for me. So if you have like right information, you can use this to automatically create these documents, embed these in the email and automatically send to a client. It depends on how you want to do it. It totally depends on you, like how you create these workflows. You can do almost everything. And there are a lot of things which we are going to add in future. We have a long list of these automation features from our clients and we are going to make it more robust. It is, it is very robust right now. So you can you can create anything using these workflows. So, and it was, you see like this email goes from your own email. So if I go to my sent email, it will show there as well. I will show you that. And your clients will never know you like, like a bot is sending these emails. So now you see like I'm, this is on, I'm on sent folder and shows my, in my sent folder as well. I think we almost covered everything. We are done, like we are at 11.52. We have like a few minutes for question and answers. And if I'm not able to answer anything today, or you like, if you have more questions, you can always reach out to support at Lockers. You can directly reach me at Harry at Lockers. A lot of you are our already cl are our clients. So you know, you like, you can reach out on the chat as well. You can call us as well. So I think now we are ready to take questions. If you have any questions, feel free to read. Feel free to ask. Questions, anyone? I think no questions, right? Excuse me, sir. Uh, there's one question. Uh -huh. uh, so there are a lot of limitation in doing word on Mac, unfortunately. Where uh -huh. can Locus close up some of those gaps with documents? Okay. <clears throat> lot of limitation in doing word on Mac. Yeah, so there are, you are correct. So we can't do much there because you know, like, so what I showed you is you know, like, is a functionality of Mac uh, of, a, of a Microsoft Word. And so we are, so our document automation is built on Microsoft Word's abilities. So if there are certain features which are not on the Mac or which are not like on a, on, on a Google Word, so we are, we are limited by it. Yeah, so we, we can't do much there. All right, sir. Thank you. I hope Kimberly, your question is answered. Uh, uh, so we have another question. Let me add one more thing to that. And sure. so on the, yeah, so in future, you know, like we are going to add, so we are working on it. Like we are going to add a plugin, which will sit on your, on your Microsoft Word. And then you will be able to add like these, it will make it easier. You know, right now you have to work with your, with these, your your conditional logics which are based on microsoft word and in future you know like we are going to launch a plugin which is going to do these for you so it may be able to help you because i don't know like what is your question what limitations you are having so it's a very vague thing so maybe after this call maybe you can send an email to me and we can discuss like what limitations are you talking about all right sir thank you so there's one another question by uh, kit compton Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so the question is, is there a way to verify that a workflow is executing correctly before launching it? Before launching, so you have to create like a sample matter. So currently we don't have it, but after you launch it, you know, like it will tell you, I will show you like how you can go do it. So you can click on automation here. So you see the logs on the right top. If you click on the logs, it will show you like when this workflows have been implemented. 
So today you see just I implemented one workflow and I have like something from past as well because I had a lot of workflows and I have deleted all of them. So now they are showing like as an A. So we implemented sample workflow today, right? So it shows me like I implemented on matter Abby Cartwright and it created the task, it created the task, it created the email, it created the document, it sent an email. So once you once you executed, the system will tell you in the logs, like what happened with the previous execution. You can even click here, like on the workflow itself. Again, you can click on log and it will show you the logs for, for the workflow here again. All right, sir. So uh, there's one another, yeah, please, sir. Yes. I think I saw a question, that's why, uh, sorry I interrupted you. I think about the drip emails, right? It, it is from Michael. So Mike, you right. like we are launching drip emails. You know, like you will see like in in few weeks. So it can be you know, like maybe by end of this month or maybe end of October. So we have already implemented it. We have already tested it. It is only in the in the launch phase. You know, like once we you know, like we do do everything. So drip, drip emails will be you know, like will be very very powerful. You will be able to select like when you want to send it, and you will also be able to select like what time difference you want to send, like two days, three days, or you will be able to select, like you want to send it like on Friday, you want to send on, on Thursday. And it will not only work with emails, it will work with the whole workflow. So you can create tasks after that, you can create documents after it. So you will be able to do everything with that, yeah. So there's a question, could you please provide sources for workflow ideas? Getting started is hard. I know it's hard. So, <laughs> so you can work with me. You know, like so less. So next week, I think I'm planning to do a work like only on the workflows, like how to how to create workflows for different. So we have a plan. You know, like we are going to have like sample workflows. So we are working on that. So we are going to launch that pretty soon, but it will take few months. So we are going to launch like sample workflows for each practice area. So that's something we are working on, but you can work with me and we can create a workflow for you, like a sample workflow. And then you can, you can, you know, like you can, <clears throat> you can copy them and you can work, you can make more of them. But end of day workflow is something which is your workflow, like how your practice works and how you want your practice to work like in future. So we can help you to create something sample. We are going to create some sam more samples in it, but end of day, you know, like workflows is your baby. So, and it is something like how you work, how you think and how you code it. We can create those for you if you want, if you can send us the steps, what you wanted and we can help you create as well. As always, you know, like we do like unlimited training. So, feel free to reach out. We can do more training. We can do one-on-one -on -one training for, for the workflows as well. Yeah. Anyone else? Sahil, do we have more questions? Mm. No, sir. No more questions. Okay. Yeah. So guys, you know, like, thank you very much for your support. And you know, like, we are going to do more, more, more webinars. And you're know, like, we, so this webinar, you're know, like, we touched a lot of topics. They were huge topics. We wanted to see the response. And moving forward, you know, like, we are going to do like smaller topics, like only on conditional statements, only on the workflows only on the conditional statements in, in the intake forms or on the on the pipelines or on the CRM. So every week we are going to try to do like one webinar like every week. And so, and send me if you have like ideas about webinars, what you want to see, what problem you are having in automating your practice. And we are going to, we are going to cover those, yeah. Thank you very much, Cass. You know, like, I think we will close the session now. We are going to do, we have already recorded this, so we are going to share this with you as well. Thank you very much. <laughs>